Hello, my fellow Freedom Builders, and welcome to the channel. Now, this is a video I have promised you for a while. It is a little bit technical, but you don't have to worry too much. You don't need to be a professor in math to follow. But today I am going to describe how you can look at your own portfolio and how you can compare your portfolio to other portfolios. Because normally we are just uh, we are just comparing apples to bananas basically if I compare my portfolio let's say this is my swing trading portfolio that you have followed in here and I'm comparing this performance here at 3.37 percent to for instance the market then you could say well you've done worse than the market if I compare it to let's say Bitcoin over a given uh, time period the Bitcoin might have gone up 10,000 percent and you are saying your portfolio is really really awful or Bitcoin is down 90% and then you could say, well, your portfolio is really amazing, Hans. However, we cannot really do that because we are only looking at the return. We need to look at some other criteria and parameters to really get a good sense of if this performance is really good or if it is above normal or below normal. So what do we do? Well, we need to look at something called risk adjusted return. And that is where you look at your return and compare it to the risk or the uh, variability, the volatility in the portfolio. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, before I get back to this portfolio, let me take you a little step into the world of statistics. And as I promised, I won't get too technical, but there are a couple of things we need to know about. <clears throat> One of them is something called a standard deviation. Now, what is that? You might have seen something like this. This is what is called a bell curve. Uh, but a standard deviation is basically that you have a set of, uh, of data. Let's uh, say we have a number of, uh, of, of numbers here. There are eight all together. Uh, so we divide by eight and we get the average of five. Now to get the the deviation here, the standard deviation, we need to, and don't be too scared here, I'll explain what we do. Basically, you just need to say, let me find my drawing tool that comes here. We have an average of five and then we have some numbers. We have two and four and four and even a four more and a couple of fives and we have a seven and a an, nine. All right. So these numbers, this data set deviates from the average. So they can put this into a calculation and then can say, OK, the standard deviation here, this is a sigma uh, sign. It normally is shown by the sigma sign or the letters SD for standard deviation. So the standard deviation here is two, meaning that they don't deviate too much. We could have had a data set where it was still five, but we might have a data at minus 40 and one at plus 50, but we still ended up with five. That data set deviated a lot more from the average, meaning that the standard deviation might have been five or 10 or even 20. So this number here tells us that from an average, how much does the, de uh, the uh, data set deviates or cycle around the data set? All right, that's all you need to know about standard deviations. Now, when we look at this, we can see that, for instance, we have something called a sharp ratio. <clears throat> a sharp ratio is something that a lot of hedge funds and mutual funds and ETFs and uh, they are showing in their materials. And that is because they actually give us a decent picture of what the return is compared to what the volatility is of the portfolio. Let's have a look at the sharp ratio here. We can have it. Uh, let me show you something first. Actually, I have the Apple uh, stock here and I have put uh, three different channels on it just to give you uh, another little glimpse into the uh, standard deviations here. This is something called a regression channel and it is with a regression line in the middle. It's kind of a mean kind of an average of all these data points. It is the best fit point of all these data points. Now this regression channel is um, has a, a top and a bottom and they are two standard deviations away. So the farther the top and the bottom is away, the more the data here deviates, meaning how, how the more volatility there are in, in the data set. 
So if, for instance, we take a look at the data set here, let's just remove the channel. You can see, if I could hit it here, you can see that the, the price here of Apple basically go up in one straight line, meaning that if we draw the regression channel, it calculates and say, okay, we have a mean, a, a regression line here, but since the data almost doesn't deviate from this line, we can put these lines very, very close to the midline. The next set here, we can see that the Apple price starts to deviate some more. There's still a midline, but the top and the bottom is far, uh, a lot farther away from the midline because it has to, to have that to uh, have these data sets in the channel. The last one here, we can see that the data is really swinging widely. And even though the price does go up very slightly here of 8%, we can see that at some point we are also down uh, 30%. So this is some really wild swings. Now, if this was not your Apple stock, but if this was your portfolio, which portfolio would you rather have? Would you have one that went up 10% with very small fluctuations, went up 10% with huge fluctuations, or went up, let's say, 10% with massive fluctuations? Well, I know what I would choose. I would choose this one because it's a lot more um, steady and a lot more stable in a portfolio. So when we go back to our portfolio, this sharp ratio actually tells us something about what return we have been able to, to get uh, with a certain number of volatility. Let's have a quick look at the calculations. What the sharp ratio here is actually doing is that it's taking your return. This is the return of your portfolio. And then it is subtracting the risk-free rate. Now, for a number of years, the risk-free rate has been nearly zero, but uh, in recent time, the interest rate has gone up. So this risk-free rate uh, has also uh, gone up. So you take your, your own return, you divide it by the risk-free rate that you could get in any treasury bond or whatever, and then you divide it by the standard deviation of the portfolio. Now, this standard deviation of, of the portfolio is not something that you normally calculate yourself. But if you punch your numbers into something like our portfolio program here, uh, it can do all the calculations for you. So what this basically it says is you have a return and this return is, let's say it is 10 percent, went up 10 percent. Um, we deduct the risk-free rate. Let's say this is this arrow here, uh, the, the, uh, the result up here, and then it's looking at the deviation. So if we're taking your result and the price of your or the, the performance of your portfolio is only deviating like this, then the sharp ratio will be very high. If we have the same portfolio, but it deviates like this, the sharp ratio will be a lot lower. So what the sharp ratio is telling you is how much is your performance compared to the risk you're actually taking. <clears throat> now, there is a problem with the sharp ratio, even though it is the ratio that is normally uh, used. Uh, the problem with it, if you find the Apple stock here, is that let's say this is our portfolio. It has gone up by, let's say, something like 123%. And to calculate the sharp ratio, we take the overall uh, volatility of the portfolio uh, or of the stock in, in this case. But there is a problem here, and maybe you can see it. Because, yes, we don't like a, a portfolio that is too volatile. But who cares that it is volatile in an upwards direction? We do actually like our portfolio to really speed up and go up. So what we don't want is the volatility where it drops. So we have another ratio here, and that is something called the Sotino ratio. And that is actually a ratio that I prefer compared to the Sharpe ratio, because what that does is almost the same. It takes the portfolio return, uh, it takes uh, the subtracts a risk-free rate, but then it uh, divides by the standard deviation of the downside. So what this does is that it takes, if the, again this was your portfolio, it takes the overall return 
and then it only uh, calculate the volatility every time the portfolio drops and not when it goes up. And that is a significant difference. So if we take a look at the portfolio here, we can see that right now, and remember, we are only five weeks in, so we cannot really use these numbers because the sharp ratio of 4.3 is ridiculously high. Uh, normally, a hedge fund manager would uh, give his right arm for a sharp ratio of 1 or 0.9 or 1.1. So 4.3 is completely uh, far out. And having uh, the, the benchmark, the uh, S&P 500 with a sharp ratio of 5 is equally ridiculous because that is, in a, uh, if you look back in history, something like 0.6 or 0.7. So if you can have a sharp ratio of around 1, that is great. Um, but you can see here the sharp ratio of 4.34, but the Sotino ratio is actually a lot higher. And that is very normal because it is not taking into account the up upwards volatility, but only the downwards uh, volatility. So when I'm looking at my own portfolio and I'm comparing it to another guy's portfolio or a hedge fund or a mutual fund or an ETF, I'm not just saying uh, is my absolute return of 3.37%, is that better or worse uh, or compared to a given investment? No, I'm looking at the Sharpe ratio and the Sotino ratio. And if I, for instance, have been able to get 20% in performance in a year, and uh, there's a hedge fund that also got 20%, or maybe they got even 30% uh, a given year, and I only got 20 then I don't care too much about that. If, for instance, I have had a Sotino ratio of 3, but they only had a Sotino ratio of 1. That means that, okay, they got a 50% better return than I got. I got 20%, they got 30 But uh, on a, ri a risk uh, or a, uh, a risk adjusted return, sorry, um, I did a lot better job. Meaning that, for instance, if I had gotten 20%, they got 30%. I had three in Sotino ratio, they had one. Then I could say, okay, well, then I will use some leverage because I would accept to take the same risk as they did. Then I could basically multiply my results by three to get the same volatility as they had. Uh, and all of a sudden, I didn't have 20%, but I had 60% in performance. I know it sounds uh, a, a, lit, uh, a, a bit um, of a mathematical uh, juggling here, but what you should remember is that you should never compare your own performance in absolute terms to anything else. You should always ask to see a Sharpe ratio, a Sotino ratio, and there are some other ratios, and I'll make other videos about them, but basically, this is what it all comes down to. How much performance are you getting compared to how much volatility risk you're taking in the process of getting your return? I hope this made sense. Otherwise, please feel free to write underneath the video. Remember to like and subscribe and all that jazz. And uh, take care of yourself and your money out there. I'll talk to you again shortly. Bye.